Now that we've animated our vise, we're going to go ahead and test it and make sure it can actually withstand the forces that it that is exerted on it. Uh, before we do that, though, let's change a few things. First off, if you look at your vise, it might look a little weird right now, and that's because we are dealing with um, in perspective. So we're viewing it as a perspective model instead of what's called an orthographic model. It looks a little bit more realistic, but um, it's actually less realistic when it comes to measuring things. So we're going to go ahead and change it so it looks real good. So to do that, we're going to go up to our tabs and go into view. And where it says perspective here, I'm going to just click on that, click orthographic. And you can see that change there. And while it might not look as real, it actually is more realistic. All right. um, we're also going to make it so that this can move again. So remember, under our jaw, our last make constraint was that constraint we put in the last video. I'm going to right click on that, edit it, make sure to click this little drop down box, and click a minimum and maximum, uh, maximum distance being 3.1 inches, minimum distance being 0 inches. Click OK, and now this will be able to move within that range. So now this can move again. All right, so we're going to animate it, and we're going to, not sorry, not animate, we're going to stress test it and make sure that this can ex uh, have enough, or that nothing here will really bend or break when this force is being applied in between these two pieces. So to do that, we're going to go to environments. And over here, we're going to click on stress analysis. And it takes a second to load. <clears throat> Long second to load. All right. Once we're in here, the very first thing we're going to do is just click create simulation. And you don't have to worry about any of this stuff yet. We can just click OK. All right. Now we got to assign a couple constraints here. So typically, this would be bolted via the four feet to a table. So we're going to say, we're going to go up here to fix constraint. This is saying that just it locks things down. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to click on these four circles. and click OK to represent that this can't move. Also, we have gravity exerted on this. So over here where it says gravity, I'm going to click on there. It will go straight down. So I'm going to just click on any flat surface with it, so the arrow points down. Click OK. And now we have gravity being exerted on it. And now we need to calculate or figure out how much force is going in between these two jaws. Say we clamp something down how much force would be applied there. So you can do some research, and there's some data on how much force a human can exert um, in a twisting motion, so essentially pushing down on this uh, twist. And the average force that I've read is 120 pounds. So if I exert 120 pounds right here, um, that would be fairly average of the human body. Now, because of this handle here, though, that distance is magnified by the formula for torque. So we have a formula for torque of torque is equal to force times length. So in this case, for this wrench, if I have a distance of 1 meter and a force of 50 newtons, <coughs> it would be 50 newtons times 1 foot. Well, in invent or the human being exerts about 120 inch-pounds of force right here. This is 4 inches long about. So I can take 120, multiply it by 4, and that's how much force I could exert on this. So that then means that roughly, um, in an ideal world, the average force would be 120 times 4, or 480 pounds exerted in between these two plates. So I'm going to go up here and click force. And I'm going to type that in, so 480 pounds. And we're going to click on that distance there. So I messed up, so we're going to go 480 and click on that distance there and click OK. I'm going to apply another force. 
on this distance, again for 480 pounds, click OK. So now I have two forces, you can kind of see the arrows nesting on top of each other, two forces being exerted in between those two 480 pounds. It doesn't really matter where this is, um, you know, technically it would be closed or so unless, but you know, if we have a larger piece, it would be there. So it doesn't really, it's not going to matter too much for what we're doing right now. So those are all the forces we need. Uh, so let's go up to here and click on simulate. And we click run. And it takes a second for this to load. Right, I paused the video and then restarted it. Um, once it's done simulating, you're going to have something that looks like this. Now, this looks pretty bad. I mean, if I look at it, wow, that thing is super bent. Um, that is exaggerated, though. And so if we go up here to display, where it says adjusted X1, if I just click on that and click on actual, that will be the actual deformation or how much it deflected. And you can tell there isn't really much at all. So this is telling us how much force is going where. Uh, and in our results, we have a bunch of different types of forces. So right now we're looking at von Mises stress. Uh, but we can also look at first principle, third, displacement, which is how much it moves. So up here moves the most, although it's still within our limits, more or less and a safety factor. And one of the things I really care about right now is the safety factor. Um, everything in blue means that this is very safe, that if we exert 480 pounds of force, uh, we need more than 15 times that. The blue is 15 max, so everything's blue. We need more than 15 times that to make things actually move and break and everything. And then also within this, we have various other things that we can check out. Now, Inventor isn't perfect here. Um, it's a fairly simplistic uh, representation of everything going on. But it gives us enough data, at least, to do a quick test, see if we need to strengthen something. So like, say we were to do this, and this ho our whole jaw was to be red, then we know we'd have to come back and kind of revisit that a little bit. Um, so it's not perfect for stress analysis, but it at least gives us a good idea. Once we're done this, we're going to go up here and click Report. And this generates a report, and I can name this. So we're going to name this, um, let's say, Vice Stress Analysis. And your name would be your name. Uh, we can even put a logo in it if we want to. It doesn't really matter. Um, and then it's going to just save it where the assembly is. So I'm going to click OK. And it takes all these pictures and generates a report for us. And there we go. And then here's our report. And it goes through and it shows us a lot of stuff. And we could analyze this then um, if we really knew more about materials testing. We could analyze this and see what what's good on the vice, what might need some work, things like that. We could close this out. If you ever were, if you need to get back to that, if you just go to your engineering drawing folder, vice, and here's that report, that Chrome HTML document, or you might be in um, Internet Explorer, but there's that same document. All right, and that's all there is to stress analysis. Um, I'm asked a lot. There's no way to represent actual breaks. So say I was to change this force to 500,000 pounds. You know, that would definitely break this vice if we were to exert 500,000 pounds. But if I were to simulate that, we wouldn't really see any breakage it would just show that it would break. So even if you mess around, um, every year I have students who try to make things break in Inventor. It's not actually going to break. It'll just tell you that it's going to break. So here we have our safety factor um, earlier where everything was blue. You can see this does not meet any safety factor requirements if we're at 500,000 pounds exerting on here. And you can see for our displacement, that's pretty bad. Um, this is an actual measurement. 
this uh, steel here, or iron here, would be very, very broken, essentially. Um, now, in real life, this would probably break well more than this with 500,000 pounds of force. But again, Inventor is not really perfect at doing that. Um, so it's not really a great way to get exact measurements. So once you're done, let's go up and click Finish Stress Analysis. That gets back into our assembly thing. Let's make sure to save it, have all of your work always saved. And that's it for stress analysis.